Well, ever since this lockdown COVID pandemic nonsense started, the tyranny seems to never end, especially with the federal administration and several state administrations. The Biden administration, though, along with top health officials, are now declaring, get this, we need a third COVID shot. That's right, two is not good enough. Starting September 20th, fully vaccinated Americans who have received either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine can now receive their booster shot. More money for Big Pharma. The shot now recommended eight months after receiving the second dose. So you got to get one shot, then I think you have to wait four weeks or six weeks, get the second one. Now you wait eight more and you get a third. Do you think this is all insane yet, folks, like I do? Let's add on top of this news the fact that several cities, liberal cities, across the country are now moving back towards mask mandates. This while our children returning to classrooms in many, many states. I'll name a few. California, where we're based, Oregon, New Jersey, New York, the list goes on and on. Mostly all blue ones are now masking the kids. Enough is enough. It is time that we all take a stand. A stand against these tyrannical and overreaching mandates and rules, because that's all they are. They're not laws, okay? We didn't get to decide them. Tyrants did. So it's up to us, folks. So I want to share something with you from my personal life. And the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, I'm always telling you guys at home, on the program here, take a stand, right? Stand up for your rights. Stand up for your kids. Stand up for your freedoms. Well, the other day, a viewer sent me a message on Facebook. And he pretty much called me out. He said, so you got this little show on TV, but what are you actually doing to make a difference? Now, I didn't put the message up or his name. not going to call him out. And I'll tell you why. Because that message actually got me thinking long and hard. And at first, I was like, hey, we have a national talk show here. This is a platform. I'm actually helping to get the conservative message out to thousands of people. I think that's doing a lot. But then I dwelled on it even longer. And I said to myself, this guy's right. I need to do more. We all need to do more. We must stand up for our beliefs and convictions, no matter the consequence. So last night, I went to my daughter's school board meeting. This is in Southern California. It's the Desert Sands Unified School District. Now, the meeting was scheduled at 7 o'clock. But as you saw right there in the video, a lot of parents showed up at 5.30 to start a rally out front. Why? Because they're tired of the tyrants mandating in that district that kids will be wearing masks all day long starting today. They also were upset that they're indoctrinating our kids in this school district with CRT curriculum. Now, as we showed you there, the parents began rallying about 90 minutes before the meeting. I showed up, met with some of them, and then we went inside. Because as a parent, my number one job is the safety and well-being of my child. With that in mind, this mask mandate is putting them at risk. And in my mind, it's a form of child abuse. You may not think that keeping these face muzzles on our kids, maybe you're thinking you're keeping them safe. You're not. So my question is, why are you doing this? Well, it's probably because you're either misinformed, blinded by fear, uneducated on the matter, or you simply lack the backbone to stand up to these tyrannical mandates. Note I said mandates, not laws, because they are not laws. A select few in power in this state and in the federal government lack the intestinal fortitude to stand up to these mandates. But you expect us parents to drop our kids off tomorrow with the masks on for eight hours. Why? It can't be because you're following the science and the data. Because if you were, you'd know that over four million children have contracted COVID in this country. And oh, by the way, how many have died? How many have had severe symptoms? Do any of you know? It's 0.008%. That's how many. The annual flu kills more kids, yet I've never heard this board demand masks on our kids before now. So maybe some of you have been watching the mainstream line media reporting that in Florida and Texas, numbers are up, and you don't want that to happen in the Valley. We'll do a little research. You'll find out the numbers the CDC reported last week were incorrect. That's a fact. Let's talk numbers. You realize that 615,000 Americans did not die from COVID. Those are combined numbers of people who actually died due to the virus and people who had the virus in their body at the time of death. Look it up. They're combined numbers. Yet your decision to muzzle our children is putting their mental and physical health in jeopardy, lack of oxygen to the body and the brain, improper immune system development. Kids are supposed to get sick from time to time so their system can react naturally. And how about their mental health board? Did you know that child depression is skyrocketing? Adolescent suicide up 22%. How about the ability to communicate? Communication skills between the kids and the teachers cannot be clear when wearing facial diapers. 
How in the hell can you hear a teacher and see their mouth for proper enunciation, pronunciation, and diction? You can't. So my question is, how long will you, the board, go along with this charade? We are doing long-term permanent psychological damage to our kids. Case in point, we've instilled fear in our kids. They fear of getting others sick. They fear death. They fear of breathing fresh air. That, my board, is child abuse. I'll end with this. The other day, my beautiful daughter, this is my beautiful daughter, we were at a store in San Diego. She put her mask on. I said, sweetie, you don't need to wear that. She said, dad, it's okay. I don't mind. I kind of like it now. Let me repeat. I don't mind. I kind of like it now. She also told my fiance that masks are okay because you don't have to communicate with others as much and you can't tell if somebody's mad or sad. So it's good because you don't have to deal with that stuff. My daughter said this. Can you think about that for a moment? Masks are okay. Avoiding human contact and emotions. The human condition demands social interaction. So what message are you as a board sending to our kids? Aren't you folks critical thinkers? Did you use any of that critical thinking when deciding to muzzle our kids? Or like a good lap dog, did you just roll over without any questions? Aren't we as good citizens supposed to question our government? And by the way, if the vaccines and masks work so well, and if your faculty and staff are vaccinated wearing masks, then why muzzle our children? So please, look at the data, do your research. If you do, you'll find your decision is wrong. It's based on false information, biased media reports, and political ideologies. One final note, you won't be alone. Several other board members in this country have changed their position. In fact, last night in North Carolina, they changed their mind because they listened to their parents. These are our kids. I just got her minutes. These are our children, not yours. You, we make the health decisions for our children, not the board. So in closing, I hope, I pray, this board will put the safety and health of our children first and not politics. Many, many parents showed up. It was standing room only. There was over 100 people in the main room. There was overflow outside. Uh, and I met a lot of amazing folks last night that I'd never known in the district, including a young, I believe 15 or 16 year old student who spoke to the board. There were parents, there were grandparents, they were bringing up the masks, they were bringing up CRT. Here's a little bit of what they had to say. When I express my political views, I get shut down because I don't fit into their agenda. If you're a teacher and your students know your political views, you have failed as a teacher. He's the young man you need to be listening to, more than even to me. What he said is true and right. You need to remove the masks off our children. I have a long list of other things I want to talk about as well. And I know you're aware of them because it's going on all over the country. Parents are standing up to their board, their elected board to protect and teach our children. You're not protecting and teaching our children the right way. I'm here as a voter, not as a teacher, although I've been a teacher at Lincoln High School for 25 years. So just make that clear. Last month, Pastor Hawkins was here and he implored you to let him be a bridge between you and these good people that elected you. You refused. I'm here today to talk to you about another bridge. It's the last bridge you have connecting you between these good people and you're about to blow it up. And I'm imploring you not to blow it up. To save your bridge, you need to do three things. You need to get rid of ethnic studies. You need to get rid of the mass. And you need to get rid of the state steel of engagement. It's all insidious. Now, what happened next, I could not anticipate. So how the rules work in this district, I'm not sure with your district where your children go. Typically, you get one, two, or three minutes to speak. If you fill out the form and request time during the public speaking period, and you don't use all of your time, you can give it to another parent that's there, another person. So that's what happened. There were about a dozen folks spoke, and then a gentleman finished up early and gave me his time. So I went back to the podium. Here's that. I have two boys that are in high school, and their bo the box that they got says, this mask does not eliminate the risk of con contacting any virus, disease, or infection. What's ironic, both these boxes were made in China. <laughs> So you're telling us that we have to put these masks that say they don't work on our children. If, if that's not the definition of virtue signaling, I don't know what is.
So I've been listening to these concerned parents up here tell you folks a lot of facts. We can't see your reaction because you're hiding behind those masks. I see some disdain in some people's eyes back there. I won't call them out by name, but I see some disdain. Why? Why are you upset with what they're saying? They elected you. You're supposed to do our will and our bidding. Not Sacramento, not a union. But I want to point out a few facts because there's been some misrepresentation tonight. There was a gal that came up earlier and talked about the numbers, as I said in my statement in Texas and Florida. I knew someone would do that. Those numbers were misreported. Do yourself a favor tonight. Log on and look. The Department of Health for Texas and Florida both refuted those numbers and said the CDC combined multiple days. The numbers are inaccurate. But yet, this administration federally and Mr. Newsom keep touting those numbers to scare the hell out of you so our kids have to wear masks and maybe get the vax once it's legalized. Those numbers are not accurate. That's one. Two. 212,000. I picked up COVID at the border a few months ago. There's 114 nations that are spewing people through our southern border. They've come in with at least a dozen different variants. I picked up the Brazilian strain. So let me tell you, when you start blaming anti-vaxxers and non-mask wearers, you're not getting the facts and the data because you're not reading. You're again listening to your union leaders that are pressuring you in Sacramento. These are mandates. These are not laws. You as a board can stand up. As I was trying to finish in my last one, a school board just last night in North Carolina stood up and said no to masks. And by the way, I will touch CRT really fast. CNN, really? Teachers are spewing that garbage to my child? Did you not see the Project Veritas tapes? The CEO, Jeff Zucker at CNN, tells his staff every day which way to spew a narrative. And for you to allow teachers to let the kids watch CNN is wrong. And you know it, Don. You're a lawyer. You know better. Okay, so more parents spoke out and there were probably a dozen or so that still wanted to speak and be heard by the board. Another parent, and I believe she was a teacher, spoke and then she relinquished her leftover time. There was about a minute and 24 on the clock to me for a third time. What happened next, folks, blew me away. You see us have guests on this show all the time where you see school boards censoring, stopping a meeting, not allowing people to speak. I never thought it would happen to me, but it did. We still have 124. She just yielded it to me, Don. We're not following the rules? Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, Don. Excuse me. I thought you're not supposed to comment. The brown act, you don't comment back. We comment, you listen. You don't comment till the end. That's the rule. She yielded her time. So. Here's what I'd like to say. I have a question for you real quick. Are you gonna throw me out, Don? Really? Excuse me. She yielded, are you gonna obey that? I'm not moving, you're gonna have to take me out. You're gonna take me out? I have a simple question. She yielded her time to No, she yielded her time to the rules of the board. Don't tell me about it. No, you don't. I got a question for you. How many of you board members this summer went on vacation without your masks on? How many of you board members went on vacations this summer without your masks on? Wow. No, Don, you broke the rules. She yielded her time to me, and you won't do it. What are you afraid of, Don? What are you afraid of? She yielded a minute 25 to me. Give it to me. Why won't you give me the time? What's your problem? What's your problem, Don? We hate you! We hate you! It's called censorship, folks. It's called censorship. There was a minute 25. Everybody calm down. Everybody calm down. Let's all calm down. There was a minute 25 left on the clock. According to the rules of this board, I was given that lady's time. Now this guy says I can't have the time and wants the board to leave. So I'll tell you what. No, you know what I'll do? Hey, but Don, sit back down. I'll leave. I'll leave. It's okay. You see what happened there, folks? The Desert Sands Unified School District Board President in Southern California, La Quinta, California, Don Griffith, refuses my time, then tells security to remove me. When the crowd begins to chant, let him talk, he then orders not only me thrown out, but the whole room. Then he tells the entire board to adjourn and go back. You heard me. I tried to calm the crowd down. I told them calm down. At the end, we all exited. And then look at this. This is the streaming version. The board returned after they kicked over 100 people out and finished the meeting with no public present. What do you call that at home, folks? I call it a tyrant. I'd like to point something else out.
please bring that picture up. And if you notice in the video, the entire time that the board president was sitting on that bench along with the rest of the board members, they all virtue signaled for over two hours wearing their masks. Yet when he got upset, when he got upset and ordered us all removed, look at that picture. Isn't that ironic? Don Griffith, you hypocrite. No mask, up yelling and screaming, kicking concerned parents, grandparents and teachers out of a board meeting that the public was allowed to attend because he didn't like what I had to say. Well, Don, I got something to say to you. I don't want an apology. I want you to apologize to the dozens of parents who didn't get to speak last night because you acted like a spoiled little kindergartner who ran away and sat in the corner with the rest of the board. So Don, do yourself a favor, be a man and apologize. Now, another big subject matter that parents were very upset about at that board meeting last night that I attended was CRT in the classroom. Joining me now to discuss this indoctrination that keeps occurring in our public schools across the country is from a professor at Princeton and Vanderbilt Universities and the co-author of this brand new book, Black Eye for America, How Critical Race Theory is Burning Down the House, Dr. Carol Swain. Doc, how you been? We haven't seen you in a bit. Hope you've been doing well. I have been doing well, and I am so excited about the parents across America who have band together, parents in public, private, independent schools, Christian schools, to fight back against CRT. Uh, I'll tell you, you, you probably didn't hear the story right before you, um, Carol, but I decided to put my, I guess not money where my mouth is, but my mouth where my mouth is, since I have this <laughs> talk show. And last night, I went to my child's school board meeting. I went to speak out against the mask mandate that they instituted a few days back, but a lot of parents were there not only disgusted with the mask mandate, but with the CRT. And I was not aware that it was already being taught in middle school within my child's district. I'd heard about it through some high school parents, but sure enough, they've got teachers showing CNN in the classroom and talking to them like George Floyd is the next MLK Jr. Like literally, uh, a kid last night said that that in his classroom, a teacher told them George Floyd was just like Martin Luther King. And I'm going... That, that is such a disgrace. And, right? And Dan, it's really been in the schools longer than George Floyd's death. But after George Floyd's death, then it was like it was on steroids. They saw an opportunity because there were so many guilt-written whites and corporations, cooperations that mm -hmm. poured money into it. I'm getting that wrong. Corporations. Yeah. <laughs> that poured money into they it. They did. And so uh, people just became much more aggressive with their agendas. Yep. I, they felt emboldened, right? And nobody's stopping them because a lot of times, Carol, the school boards act like they don't even know the teachers are doing this. Parents get up and they speak to these boards and the board members are so damn clueless. They're like, that's not being taught. You guys are crazy. Da, da, da. And then they're like, no, no. well, here's the examples. It's being taught. Teachers are doing that's it. That's their posture, because they would say, no, we're doing D DEI, we're not doing CRT, we're doing culturally sensitive learning, we're doing educational equity, we're doing social justice. Equity. But yep. they are lying, and they know they're lying, and they're following the wishes of the uh, teachers' unions. And so it is an agenda that's um, Marxist-based, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that parents are pushing back against it. And this new book is really a resource that will equip people uh, so that they can do it more effectively when they fight back. Yeah, I heard one last night that in the school district that my child attends, it's ethnic studies is how they're hiding it. But then they've got it tied to these groups who literally, if you go online, look at their website and what they stand for, they're doing Marxist teachings. They are telling all whites are the oppressors and blacks are the victims, but yet they're calling it ethnic studies. That's how they, they hide They also it. call it civil rights. And so mm. they take a uh, cherry pick from the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and then they will link it to CRT teachings rather than teach the civil rights movement as the positive uh, American cooperative venture that brought whites and blacks and just everyone together around a set of principles and values, that's not how it's being taught. And so, you know, what we try to do in this book 
uh, Black Act for America is to educate people about what it is, where it came from, why it's anti-American, why it runs counter to civil rights laws and our Constitution. And we have two chapters on how to fight back. We have a glossary because they're always throwing out terms, and it's difficult to keep up with the terms they're using. But we have a glossary. We have an index. We have citations. People can be fully equipped uh, by reading the new book. Yeah, I've got terms for it. I, put, I clump it all <laughs> into one. It's called B. Yes, that's where I clump it, Carol. Um, I got to ask you a really, really serious question because a parent brought this up last night and this parent was a grandparent and a former history teacher and said she fears that all of this CRT teaching is literally going to, and if we look 20, 30 years down the road, she said, rewrite American history if we don't stop it because they are going to teach a generation and then another generation, this is the way it was instead of the facts, the truth. They're gonna use and spew this CRT narrative and it could literally change the fabric of America one or two generations down the road. Do you see that happening if we don't put a stop to this? That's absolutely what they're doing and it's not just with CRT, they're doing it in every uh, part of American life. And critical race theory is only one of several critical theories. That's critical queer theory, critical feminist theory, uh, these theories are Marxist-based and rooted in postmodernism, and they are designed to deconstruct and destroy American institutions. And we fight back uh, by understanding what it is, by understanding our legal and constitutional rights. And also, we have to join forces with other people as the parents are doing. And there are other ways that we can fight back too, but it is a battle. It is the civil rights issue of our times. I'm reading, um, I read the forward a little bit into the first chapter, got the book the other day from you. Thank you so much, by the way, for the autographed copy. Uh, and I'm looking at just some of the back stuff here, folks. If you want to know, this is really going to describe CRT in theory and practice, explain how the ideology rather threatens traditional American values, and equip everyday Americans with the strategies to help them resist and defeat the CRT's influence. Sounds like a great book. Can't wait to finish it up. Again, folks, it is Black Eye for America, How Critical Race Theory is Burning Down the House. Dr. Carol Swain, and then also co-authored by Christopher Short. Uh, looks like very smart guy like you. I know you guys got a lot, of, a lot of parchment paper on the wall, a lot of studying over the years to get those PhDs and degrees. So I recommend it for folks. Uh, thank you. Dr. Swain, thank you so much for everything that you do and your voice not only in the black community, but for all Americans. You truly are a treasure. We appreciate you. Thank you so much.